Hello on Fullperson, this is Anton, and it's time for another update in regards to our neighbor, Mars. Because once again we have some really exciting pictures coming from the surface of the red planet, and even at least one video, as well as a few discoveries from various missions. Although I guess let's start with some of the more unusual pictures from the last few months. The unusual feature on the surface of Mars known as the brain terrain. Actually because it kind of resembles the human brain. But these are features on the surface of Mars, mostly located in mid-latitudes, in the location where the northern plain meets the southern highland. And it seems to occur inside craters, valleys, and a lot of other ice-rich locations, suggesting that this is definitely something created by the ice water. The problem is that nobody actually knows exactly how this is made, because it seems to be unique to Mars. It could be formed by the frozen water underneath, and possibly be a result of sublimation, but it's actually completely unknown. Although some scientists are trying to solve this by finding potentially similar features right here on planet Earth. Here's an example from the Arctic, and to some extent it does maybe look very similar, but not exactly the same. The features on planet Earth are definitely different, and are not as advanced as the ones on Mars. And so exactly what's happening here, and exactly how this is formed, is not going to be known for some time. Definitely looks cool though. And speaking of looking cool, once again we have a video of a Martian whirlwind, or a Martian dust devil. Now these have obviously been seen before, but it's always fun to find more. And this is actually a really big feature, at least 200 feet or 60 meters across, and at least 1.2 miles or 2 kilometers high. But because it's so far away, it does appear kind of small. And though obviously these also exist on Earth as well, on Mars they're generally a little bit bigger, and will usually look a little bit more dramatic even though they don't actually exert as much pressure. Nevertheless, cool stuff. And more cool stuff was a picture taken by the Perseverance. A picture you see right here, a Martian sunset. And though it might not look spectacular, it does become very spectacular once you compare it to the one right here on planet Earth. Here's actually a really cool picture created by NASA with the title Two Worlds, One Sun. And that's because the sunset on Mars will always be blue in color compared to the red-orange sunsets here on Earth. And this is of course a result of the interaction between the Sun itself and the atmosphere of the two planets. The sunset has to go through a relatively thick layer of oxygen, nitrogen, and quite a lot of particulates in the atmosphere, which basically filters out blue light, leaving the oranges and the reds mostly untouched. But on the red planet, the atmosphere is much thinner and is also predominantly CO2 yet also contains large amounts of dust, including the dust of iron-rich particles, which tends to have almost the opposite effect. It seems to scatter low-frequency red light, yet leaves the blue light almost completely untouched, which also makes all of the light near the sun appear generally blue. You can see this as a very large halo around the sun. But intriguingly, the rest of the sky is usually yellow to orange, because the red light gets scattered across the rest of the sky, to some extent also adding a little bit of redness to the already red planet. But these bluish colors can persist even several hours after the sunset, which means that at night you actually get to see clouds in the night skies as they reflect some of this light. Quite a lot of analysis of various clouds on Mars usually take place at this time. And so basically the clouds to some extent almost appear like they're glowing, but glowing with a blue light. So quite an impressive image. But it becomes more impressive when you see things side by side. At the same time, we have quite a few images showing us the terrain on Mars, which once again seems to confirm the same thing about Martian history. It very likely used to be wet here, and it also most likely contained seasons. With all this recently detected by observing some of the new images from the Curiosity rover, and detecting certain patterns which appear to be the result of various mud cracks similar to the ones we find on planet Earth, but in this case, a result of something that forms over many, many, many different seasons, with some of the newer cracks even appearing to have sulfates, which were very likely deposited much later. And so here, this is actually a sign of different water levels changing with time, and some kind of a lake very likely rising and falling, creating these formations. In other words, a direct confirmation of some kind of a dry, wet season period but something that existed on Mars billions of years ago. And these constantly changing conditions most likely encouraged a lot of chemical reactions inside this unusual clay, 
which we know on Earth very likely led to the formation of very complex organic chemistry, including DNA precursors. So definitely quite an important discovery. With other signs of seasonality or changing conditions detected from a slightly different region that basically shows us the evidence of various ancient glaciers. Glaciers that transform the land that you see right here and almost directly resemble similar features on planet Earth. Basically this is a sign of retreating ice flows during some kind of an interglacial period. And in this case we're basically seeing these ancient glaciers picking up rocks and soil, carrying them elsewhere and then depositing them in a different location. It's almost impossible to explain this in any other way. And so these observations from the Martian surface almost definitively tell us that this planet had seasons and it also had quite a lot of glacial activity. This is also from the mid-latitudes, so this was not just in the North or South Pole. And though these discoveries might suggest that life could have existed here, there's one discovery that was really surprising to everyone and to some extent almost suggests the opposite. Or at least presents Mars as still an extremely different type of a planet. This relatively recent study you can find in the description performed an extremely thorough analysis of various minerals on Mars and compared them to minerals on Earth. Here on Earth, minerals are pretty much everything. They're obviously responsible for complex organic chemistry, but quite a lot of them actually have been created by life. And here on Earth, nearly 6,000 different minerals are known to exist. Many of them were formed in the beginning of the planet, but quite a few of them developed later on, especially through various chemical interactions with the constantly changing planet, but also with a lot of different types of life. There is of course a direct correlation between mineral complexity and the presence of complex life on the planet, or at least for planet Earth. But though 6,000 are known on planet Earth, after 50 years of studies, only 161 minerals have been identified coming from the surface of Mars. Now obviously there might be more, but 160 versus 6000 is a huge difference. Because first of all, this kind of suggests that Mars was most likely not nearly as complex geologically as planet Earth. It also suggests that there are probably a lot of different pathways for the mineral formation that seem to be absent on the red planet. This planet isn't and even wasn't advanced enough to produce the complexity similar to planet Earth. At the same time, the lack of plate tectonics and very likely active geological cycle prevented the formation and development of a lot of other minerals as well. But I guess more importantly, the lack of mineral complexity on Mars also to some extent implies that maybe life never really existed here. It's obviously very early to tell, but if Mars does not have the complexity similar to planet Earth, it's extremely unlikely to have ever had life as well. Here on Earth, life and complexity of minerals are directly interconnected. And so yeah, at least for now, maybe a somewhat concerning discovery in regards to potential existence of life on the red planet. But we might be able to find out if there is life if we actually organize some kind of a crewed mission here. And it just so happens that one of the missions on Perseverance was this really really cool cube-like instrument that you see right here known as MOXIE. And MOXIE's main purpose was to test if we can actually produce oxygen directly from the CO2 on Mars. And while it's official that it seems to work really well, over the period of several years, the instrument was able to produce 12 grams of oxygen per hour with approximately 98% purity. Essentially using an electrochemical process where the oxygen is separated from CO2 and is then combined with another oxygen. And more importantly, it seems to work in pretty much all conditions throughout the entire Martian year. Which means that by bringing a much larger version of this, not only will the astronauts will have something to breathe, they'll also be able to produce their own fuel by using nothing but Martian atmosphere. Assuming of course the mission to Mars happens at some point in the future. There is once again a bit of a snag here. Some of the recent financial reports suggested that even trying to retrieve samples from Mars is going to cost quite a lot, possibly upwards of 11 billion dollars. That's of course more expensive than the James Webb Space Telescope that took several decades to develop. And so at the moment it's unclear if these samples collected by the Perseverance are going to be collected in the next decade. I mean they're supposed to be collected, but it just seems to be ridiculously expensive. Which is actually why some of the scientists started to think about, okay maybe we can actually collaborate with someone on this. And it just so happens that the first country that obviously came to mind was, yeah, China. Turns out that things are really complicated. 
Even though China is also planning a mission to Mars around the same time, with the main purpose of sample retrieval, and even though this would dramatically reduce the costs if two countries collaborated, turns out that because of something known as the Wolf Amendment passed in 2011, it is basically completely legal for anyone from NASA to collaborate, or technically even talk to, anyone from the Chinese Space Agency. Strangely enough, they're not even allowed to attend different science conferences that might have anything to do with NASA. And though China is obviously not in the best terms with the US right now, as far as I know NASA is still collaborating with Russia, and that by itself is kind of hypocritical. Also, as far as I know, almost every NASA scientist would like this rescinded, and so quite a lot of NASA scientists have actually been pushing to try to remove this amendment because it's really not helping anyone. By being able to collaborate with another country, the joint mission to planet Mars would make things so much faster and so much more efficient. And we obviously know from the experience with the International Space Station that these collaborations do end up producing something absolutely incredible. So yeah, but at least for now it looks like US is going to be on its own and China is going to do its own thing as well. Things might change by 2030, but at least for now we're not really sure. Either way though, because of the costs, it's not clear if the retrieval mission will ever happen. And so all of these samples might actually be staying on the surface for quite some time. But I'm sure someone will figure something out, because there are still almost 10 years before this mission has to be officially launched. Other than that though, well, that's pretty much all I wanted to mention about the Red Planet and some of the new discoveries coming from the surface. We'll come back and talk more about Mars in some of the future videos. Until then, check out some of the previous videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.